Hi everyone! Thank you for dropping by to my channel and welcome! Recently, some of my friends were asking me on how I became an English teacher here in Japan. And so, I thought of making this video not just to answer them, but also to answer you as well. Yes, you heard it right! You! Because I know that you are interested to become an English teacher or ALT here in Japan. That's why you're watching this video, right? But before we start guys, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And please hit that subscribe button down there, okay? Arigato In today's video, I will be discussing all about my journey in becoming an English teacher or ALT here in Japan. ALT. What is an ALT? This is an acronym that stands for Assistant Language Teacher or Teachers. Here in Japan, there are two common types of English teachers. First one, ALT who work for the government or public school here in Japan, mostly elementary schools, junior high schools, or even senior high school or high school. Second, Aikaiwa teachers who mostly work for private institution or company. They basically teach at English conversation schools or what we call Aikaiwa Gakko in Japanese. But wait guys, I will only tackle all about how I became an ALT which might be also beneficial to you. Now, an ALT could be directly hired by the government or the Board of Education of each prefecture or maybe the Ministry of Education through their JET program or what we call Japan Exchange and Teaching Program. In my case, I was hired by a private dispatch company called AUS Company Limited or One World Language Services Company Limited which is based in Fukuoka, Japan. Now, how did I know about this job? How did I know about this company? Let me tell you a short story. When I was in Thailand, an Australian friend of mine suggested me to visit a certain website. It's called Gaijunpat. And because I dreamt of traveling while I'm still young and single, it's also an ultimate dream for me to live and work in Japan, so I tried. Luckily, I was then contacted by Owl's Company Limited. Okay guys, I want you to know that there are so many private dispatch companies here all over Japan and Owls is just one of them. Owls is mostly popular and known here in the southwest part of Japan or Kyushu Island. So if you guys are really interested in searching or getting an opportunity, a teaching opportunity here in Japan, I would recommend you to visit the website. I'm gonna put the link down there so be sure to check it out, okay? You can also look and search for the following companies like Interact, Waterlink, Altia, Althea Central, Heart English School, Eon, and many others. These are just some of the private dispatch companies that I know. Now let's talk about what requirements of being an ALT. For those native speakers or those people who came from English speaking countries, you should be a graduate of any four year course or you should have a bachelor's degree. If you are an Asian like me or from any non native English speaking countries, it is preferred that you you should be a graduate of education or any other courses related to teaching or communication. Or better yet, you have received an education conducted in English for at least 12 years. Number two, the transcript of records. Most of the companies might ask for your transcript of records of your university or college degree. Number three, any other or additional certificate like CELTA, DELTA, TESOL, TEFL, IELTS, or even TOEIC certificates. These are also very important and an advantage if you have or you possess these certificates. In my case, I have TESOL and TOEIC. Number four, teaching licenses. Of course, this is also an optional, but it's also an advantage that you hold or possess these kinds of license from your home country or the country where you finished your studies. In my case, I have a teaching license from the Philippines as well as teaching license from Thailand where I work before I relocate here in Japan. Number five, of course, the age. You should be over 20 years old and under 60 years old. 
In case you are currently here in Japan, you must hold a valid residence or visa status that allows you to live and work here in Japan. You should also possess a valid residence card or the certificate of alien registration or what we call Gaijin card in addition to the base requirements that I mentioned earlier. The main status of a residence required should be instructor status. However, if you hold a permanent resident or permanent residence visa, you can also work. If you are a spouse or child of a permanent resident, you can also work. And lastly, the long-term resident status. Another thing that I think is also important for you to know is the money requirement. Here in Japan, they have different way of giving the salary. Let me give you my own experience as an example. I started working in April and I received my first payment or salary at the end of May. Meaning, you work this month and you get paid the following month. That's how it goes. And so, because of that, most of the companies or potential companies that hire ALT overseas will require you that you might be needing at least 500,000 yen in cash. Take note, it should be in cash, not from credit cards, so that you can cover the cost associated in setting up your apartment and sustain yourself until your first payday. Now, let's talk about recruitment processes. Again, I was in Thailand when the entire recruitment processes happened. So I will be sharing with you my experience. First, the company contacted me through email stating that they are interested in hiring me. I highly recommend you guys to do a background check before you accept any job offer. And so, I undergone several interviews. If I'm not mistaken, I undergone three interviews. Those interviews were done through Skype. The first interview was all about uh, the expectations of becoming an ALT here in Japan and basically all about myself and my expected salary of the job offer. After a day or so, they contacted me again and sent me email stating that uh, they wanted to uh, proceed to the next step of the hiring or recruitment process. And so the second interview was held and it was all about uh, pretty pretty the same with the first interview but that time it was done by uh, the executive manager of Al's Company Limited. The second interview is also all about orientation or job orientation and familiarity of the jobs and responsibilities of becoming an ALT. After the second interview, I received an email of instructions about the demonstration teaching. Some companies will require you to do a demonstration teaching during the interview, but in my case, they gave me set of instructions on how should I accomplish this demonstration teaching. So it's actually depending on how a company will do their recruitment. Next step was they asked me to send the necessary documents such as Number one, passport ID page. Number two, transcript of records. Number three, diploma. Number four, original certificate of completion from your university. Number five, scanned teaching license or licenses if you have some. Number six, scanned of any additional certificate that I mentioned earlier. These requirements are all needed for the hiring company to apply for your certificate of eligibility in your behalf which can only be done here in Japan through the Ministry of Justice and only the dispatching company or the private dispatching company should do it or should submit your application. So I waited for about three weeks and they sent me the original certificate of eligibility to Thailand. What is this certificate of eligibility and how important is it? An applicant who wishes to enter Japan for employment or job purposes, general or specific, is required to obtain a certificate of eligibility. The COE or the certificate of eligibility is issued by the Ministry of Justice here in Japan. This certificate is also really important and a major requirement for you to apply for your working visa wherever you are. So after that, I went to Bangkok, Thailand because that's the nearest Japan visa application center and so I applied for my instructor working visa. Some of the requirements they required, of course, number one is the COE, the original certificate of eligibility. Number two is, of course, your original passport should be valid for at least six months. And number three, the visa fee. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's about 2000 to 2500 Thai bucks. So 
these all depends on uh, the country where you're at. I waited for about three or four days and I got my instructor visa. So guys, this is an example of an instructor visa. And then I purchased my plane ticket. Some companies will give you reimbursement of the amount you paid for your airfare. However, in my case, they didn't. Just be ready with your finances and budgets about this matter. When I finally arrived in Japan, I only had this couple of instructions to find and locate our main office in Fukuoka, Japan. Just a reminder guys that here in Japan, it is not so common to find Wi-Fi hotspots in public places. So you have to be ready, especially if you are going to use your online maps or your GPS. In my case, I had a hard time finding our office in Fukuoka. I also had zero Japanese language skill and I just couldn't find any Wi-Fi hotspots in places. It was a memorable experience though. Overall, I learned a lot from it. And so our company did a two-day initial training for me. Basically, it's all about becoming an ALT, your roles and responsibilities, and how to abide Japanese laws because, you know, Japan is really strict when it comes to their law. It was a very informative and useful one. Eventually, you'll get familiar with the Japanese working etiquettes and working ethics as you live here. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I think I will be ending this video already as I don't want it to get too long. If you guys have any other questions, please leave or write your questions below and I will try my very best to answer all of them. That's all about it for this video. Thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you again soon. Ciao, mata ne!